Um, thanks very much. First of all, could I, as you did, Cahir, look, um, welcome Sandra and all the other guests here today. And I just take the opportunity to compliment Sandra and all our colleagues and wave on the outstanding work that they have done over the past 25, 26 years, up to 30 years. So it's they have a great record of advocacy on behalf of people who have suffered so much and continue to suffer so much. The presentations made by the family members were powerful presentations. They were so dignified uh, by family members who have suffered so much and who continue to suffer so much through the loss of loved ones. The words encapsulate so well the heartbreak and suffering of families that we, we can't even imagine. And again, on every occasion that I've, I've had the opportunity to engage with family members who have lost loved ones in the most horrific of circumstances, again, they've always said, it's the truth they want to get and again, a Christian burial for their loved ones. And I think the clear message today was from each of the, the families who have spoke, representatives who have spoken here today, is about the importance of the Christian burial, to know that a brother or an uncle, that they're laid to rest in, in a family grave. And it's so important for all of us, I suppose, particularly from the Christian community anyway, and indeed from other communities, that there is a Christian burial, that we have the opportunity to go to a grave and say a prayer or lay a flower. It's part of our makeup, it's the very part of our being. Um, and I, I, I just, um, we cannot comprehend how difficult it has to be for a family knowing that a loved one was abducted, murdered and secretly buried. And I, I think um, Oliver McVeigh and the other people spoke about you need information. Well, I tell you, I go back as I did the day that we had the Independent Commission for the Location of Victims Remains with us, and the first report of the Victims Commission in July 1999, and one of the standout quotes from that particular report, and I quote, anyone with the slightest shred of information on the possible location of bodies should make this known to the Independent Commission independent commission for the location of victims remains. There, must, there are people out there with information and maybe it's more than the slightest shred of information. And again, as, as we as a committee did the day that the commissioners were with us, we appeal again and endorse every call that there has been for people who have any information to make sure it goes forward. And then that goes back again to Sandra's excellent presentation where she outlined so well the work of, of WAVE Trauma Centre. And again, th three themes that I got from that particular presentation was the solidarity of the families of the disappeared and families whose loved ones' bodies have been recovered still work in solidarity and act in solidarity with the families who are still awaiting the return of their loved one. And it's very heartening to know of that solidarity. It, the proposed amnesty by the British, and again, um, Sandra used the word, it's a re-wounding of families who have suffered so much. It definitely is a re-wounding. And the idea of an amnesty for perpetrators of heinous crimes, be they members of paramilitary organizations, or be the members of the British state forces. It's absolutely reprehensible that any government could propose such a measure. I spoke in the Dáil on this, I think it was on Tuesday, and the teacher gave a clear response that the Irish government are absolutely opposed to any to the, the British government advancing such a proposal. There's a framework there in place for a number of years, the Stormont House Agreement, to deal with legacy issues and we need to see it implemented. Again, Sandra, um, in her, she spoke about the need to ensure that victims, where there is support, that that support is adequate and that it's generous and that it's effective. And I tell you, whatever we can do, we will support um, advocate groups such as WAVE in their request to the British government and other authorities to ensure that proper support is given to victims. Um, I go back to the point again that it was very clear 
in Sandra's uh, presentation and also the pr presentation from our other guests as well, the need for information. The Independent Commission for the Location of Victims Remains outlined very clearly to us that since their establishment shortly after the signing of the Good Friday Agreement in 1998, I think it was July 1998, the Irish Commission was established, the Irish Commissioners were, were, were appointed. Um, successive governments have provided all the resources and support that the Independent Commission needed. And I think Sandra reinforced that particular point today as well. And they have the know-how, they have the resources, and the one missing ingredient, again, is information. And sadly, that information, it's with some people, and, and it, it, whoever has it needs to come forward. And again, Sandra made the point in regard, sadly, to the loss of family members over the past number of, of weeks. And all of the crimes that we generally talk about when we talk about legacy issues, a lot of them are going back most of half a decade. And um, as time goes on, memories won't improve and information won't improve. So the matter was always urgent, but as time goes by, it gets more urgent that information is passed on so that meaningful, comprehensive and adequate investigations ca can be carried out. But I was just, just say in regard to the British um, proposal in regard to an amnesty, it's deplorable that any government would propose that all avenues to, 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 to getting the truth in regard to crimes would be cut off. You put an end to criminal uh, to investigations and the criminal prosecutions. It's unbelievable that this type of proposal would be made by a government. It's re-wounding and re-wounding um, families who have suffered so much over the decades. So again, um, just to, to reassure Wave and all, all your, the families who, whom you work with, that we are very anxious to do everything we can to support you. And when we spoke that day in Belfast, um, we, we spoke about a, maybe a commemoration in Dublin, a specific day where we come to highlight the, the, the fact that there are people still disappeared whose bodies have not been recovered, that maybe we would have particular emphasis on a day in Dublin. And Chairman, could I suggest that, that we meet um, WAVE um, at least once a year as a committee, if not more often. And we'd sincerely hope that, that if, if bodies were recovered, that, that we could um, deal as well with other issues that, that WAVE would be dealing with, other legacy issues. But I think we should have it that, that we have an engagement at least once a year as a committee with WAVE and, and their families, uh, members, to, to reassure them of our continued support and to get the message out to the public there as well that unfortunately there are people, there are families who, who have lost loved ones and bodies not recovered for more than 40 years. So again, all I can do is to compliment you very, very sincerely on the excellent presentations, excellent dignified presentations where you're making a simple appeal to try to get information, try to get the truth and have bodies recovered and able to afford families the Christian burial that they so wish for. Thank you, Akahirli. Just a minute, you, could I just say again, the uh, contributions by Sandra and all our, our guests today have been absolutely powerful and compelling. So they have but absolute clarity and outlining the terrible grief and the suffering of, of, of families could I also say, I said at the outset, that we should have some day here that we have a commemoration similar to what's held by the families in Stormont each year to try to keep a focus and create that awareness and to show that we stand with the families and that we absolutely abhor the fact that the families were shunned by some people in their communities over the years. I think as an Oireachtas, we, we should have, we should mark the events that we should, and maybe the Secretariat could talk to Sandra about that in the future, but I think we should do that very, very publicly. Could I just say one thing, Senator John McGahan said that there was no interest in the doll over the years in this matter. That for accuracy purposes, I just want to point out, I for one, and I can only speak for myself, I have raised this issue many, many times over the years and 
I, uh, and I, at my request, this committee met the Independent Commission for the Location of Victims' Remains on a number of occasions, and I suggested that WAVE be invited as well previously. And, you know, just for accuracy, some of us raised that issue many, many times in the Dáil, and we'll continue to do so. Um, and thank you, Akahir League.